up and good morning guys welcome back to another video i don't know what part we're on right now part 10 part 11 of the rhino ranch guest house project but we've got one giant step completed today and that is well not that part right there but the last couple of days lehigh and his crew have been here just absolutely killing it on getting all of the drywall mud taped and textured for me and they're actually here this morning um finishing up spraying the last little bits of texture which is all that darker, uh, kind of like yellowy orange stuff that you're seeing behind me there. Obviously it's still wet. Now in the guest house here, the texture was already kind of not like a typical texture that you see. I uh, let's see if we can get up closer. This is actually one of the better spots of it. It's an orange peel texture, but it's like not very full. This is actually kind of one of the fuller spots. Let's go check like over. You'll see it's a little more sporadic. There you go, press see right there in that shadow. Now different parts of the country do things differently out here. Typically orange peel texture is sprayed on drywall. Um, it's a lot of track home type stuff because it hides like imperfections in drywall better than if you were to do a smooth finish, which costs a lot more and shows imperfections way more. So Lehigh sprayed all the new stuff kind of to match the old stuff, even though he wasn't really stoked on that idea because it's not the greatest texture job, if that makes any sense. Um, it wasn't worth trying to respray every bit of old drywall in here. Because uh, we would have had to redo all these walls plus all the ceilings. He did an absolute killer job even though like the old texture wasn't up to his standards in matching that old texture. So I appreciate him doing that for me. You can see everything is pretty much sprayed. Um, you're going to see like the corner bead and stuff is exposed. Which you'll see right there. But the texture is sprayed on top of it. And then obviously once you prime this and paint it, you don't see that anymore. Which means now the next step here is to prime and paint everything. And our friends over at Harbor Freight have helped out immensely with that. And I'll show you what I mean in a second here, but let's just kind of, let's just kind of take in here the fact that everything is beautifully sprayed and ready and textured and oh man, I am so excited to get some paint on the walls in here. Now for the fireplace, um, I told them not to worry about texturing and, and mudding all that whole thing up. It wasn't worth it because we're gonna be doing a finish on the front of this. Um, I think I've got it decided in my brain. I think we're gonna do shiplap from about there down and then possibly some stone or something. From the mantle down, I haven't decided. I might just shiplap the whole thing all the way down just to like keep it quick, keep it simpler, um, ease up on the cost a little bit or we make that the showpiece. I'm not really sure. I've already blown my budget twofold on this project. Unfortunately though, I have to wait and I have to let all the spray texture dry here. So we can't paint it till probably not tomorrow, but the day after because the weather's not exactly cooperating with us on getting drywall mud, drywall texture, anything like that to dry out here. So we'll see you guys in a couple of days. Well guys, to say I am over this rainy weather is an absolute understatement. It's probably caused the biggest holdup on the Rhino Ranch uh, guest house project here. And I'll show you guys why. Here I've got a heater running, I've got a fan running to help circulate some of the warm air. And the problem this weather's causing is none of the drywall mud or textures wanting to dry. So you can see spots like that right there. That is a wet spot. Um, there's probably a couple more. You can see like that streak going right there as well as that line and that line. That's all still wet drywall mud. And the drywall was left um, two days ago. So it's been sitting for two days. It's just we can't get the mud to dry in this weather, which absolutely sucks because that's holding me up from priming this whole place and painting this whole place. Let's go take a gander here into this bedroom. I mean, this one probably shows it the most. You can see right there along that window. Um, you know, obviously where they used most of the mud to kind of feather the new drywall into the old and it's just, it's not drying quick enough. The struggle is real right now, guys. And you definitely don't want to seal this in with paint until it's completely dried and cured. And you can probably see right here, um, I don't want to mess up the texture because they did such a great job, but you can actually just like mush the texture down to where it completely falls off because it's still wet. So I'm going to go grab a couple more heaters. Um, the problem is we only have one outlet in this place that's hooked up uh, or one circuit I should say and that circuit doesn't like to run multiple heaters so we're probably gonna have to bring the generator up here to be able to run heaters in here to hopefully get this place warm enough um, so where we can prime it and hopefully today I don't know so get the Harbor Freight Predator generator drug up here and get this thing fired up because there's really nothing we can do it's just a waiting game for that drywall mode to dry this generator has definitely saved my butt Quite a few times out on the ranch so a huge thank you to the guys over at harbor freight for recognizing our need for a generator and sending out this awesome predator generator um we actually got a couple more goodies today that we're going to showcase from harbor freight as well but before we do that let's get this bad boy fired up a little choke the electric start is very nice the house came with this old radiator style heater thing here so let's see if this bad boy works well y'all i think i officially own a uh space heater farm so we've got this radiator heater with the fan blowing some of the hot air around the room here. That radiator heater, which is actually working really good in the bathroom here, got 
the little space heater right there kind of blowing into the kitchen and then we've got that space heater right there into that bedroom so here's the fingers crossed that this thing actually dries up at some point today well y'all this is getting old real quick uh, there's a peacock just wandering through the scene there so clearly you can see it's dark inside let me turn some lights on real quick i've let the generator and all four heaters run all day and granted it's raining outside it's very humid in here so i know that's not helping either and while we're making great progress um you can see like just little tiny streaks right there where it's darker that's still the stuff that's wet right there so we're making good progress it's just there's no way like it's just not dry enough today to prime this place which is pushing us back another day and these delays are driving me insane but something that's going to regain my sanity right now and something i want to show you guys is right behind me now the folks over at harbor freight actually watched my youtube videos and they're like hey we noticed you're redoing the guest house are you going to be doing any painting by chance and i'm like well yeah as a matter of fact i am and they said they'd love to send me out their airless sprayer their avanti airless sprayer and i'm like that's awesome because I have to prime this whole place and it's so much easier to prime a building with a paint sprayer than it is to roll primer all over new drywall. They said, are you also gonna be painting any like doors or cabinets or anything? And I'm like, oh yeah. As a matter of fact, I got a bunch of doors to paint. They're like, cool, we wanna send you our HVLP sprayer as well. So, ba boom, check that out guys. We've got the Avanti Professional five stage HVLP paint sprayer as well as the Avanti Airless Sprayer. And I'm beyond stoked to get these because these are going to be two giant helps in getting the old guest house project here done and future projects. I will admit though, I don't have a ton of experience with either of these. I've got a little bit more experience with an Airless. I actually painted the entire exterior of my previous house and it turned out freaking awesome. In terms of the HVLP world, which is high volume, low pressure, I don't really have a ton of experience in that. And that's for getting like finer finishes on doors, on cabinets, on furniture and all that. So two different sprayers for two different purposes, but we're actually gonna end up using both of these. And I think we're gonna start with, hopefully tonight, getting the old HVLP sprayer here set up and spraying the doors. Since there's really no drywall in here I can spray and there's no point in like starting and stopping and spraying half of the room. So I'm gonna get all the doors set up right now and let's check out the old HVLP sprayer here and uh, get some door sprayed. All right, so I'm just gonna take a couple of scrap pieces of wood here and I'm gonna shoot these onto the bottom of the door and that'll help hold it upright and I'll be able to move all the way around it instead of trying to like lean it up against the wall or something. Just using the old 18 gauge here. So I've got door alley set up over here. And sorry for the light flicker. We don't have any lights installed yet, so we're still running off of Milwaukee Tower Lighting, LEDs and cameras and frame rates sometimes make flicker. But I've got everything lined up here. I just went ahead and taped off the hinges. No point in pulling them all the way off and hoping that everything goes back in the doors fit right. So everything's taped off, trimmed with a little razor blade around there. And they're ready to spray. So let's go crack into our new HVLP sprayer and see what this thing's all about. Again, I've never used an HVLP sprayer. Now we all know Harbor Freight is a spot for affordable tools. I gotta say, this is one of the more expensive tools I've ever seen Harbor Freight list. Obviously aside from like generators and power tools. Um, but this thing is actually not cheap. It's like $800. I think it's on sale right now for six or $700. So. I'm assuming we got us a pretty quality machine here. Look at that, we got our little gun cleaning kit. And let's pull this booger out. It's actually not heavy. It's like a perfect weight. Look at that, it's even got like a flake paint job. Let's see what's inside this box. I'm assuming the gun. Look at that. Got our tips here. I believe it comes with two different nozzle sizes or tip sizes, I should say. So it comes with a 25 foot main hose and a five foot flex whip hose. Alrighty, so tons of hose. This section is super flexible. That's obviously the end that you're gonna be working on. So it's cool that they kind of changed up materials because this stuff's pretty rigid um, and you don't want to be fighting that when you're trying to turn your gun and all that. So it's a cool little extension to have there and everything is quick release. So. Super easy, quick on off for your gun, which is cool. Get this hooked up. I don't know, are the filters already installed? I wonder if they send you extra filters or if we need to install them. Let's see. Nope, they send you extra filters. All right. Quick, easy filter change. No tools needed. Just a quick little unlock on either side there. I feel like we should read a little bit of the instructions here, being that I've never used an HVLP sprayer. Accessory storage compartment. Where's that at? Oh, look at that. Oh, we got more tips and nozzles and stuff in here, little tools. Look at that, we even got a little gauge right there, a little chart. Depending on your material thickness, I definitely think we're gonna be in the medium range here with our uh, semi-gloss paint. So we're gonna stick with the, we might bump it up to the 1.8. I'll try the 1.3 first and see how that sprays. All right, so I've got just some pure white semi-gloss scuff defense bear ultra here. I know you real painters are probably gonna hate bear, but you know, I'm a Home Depot guy. 
is what it is. We're gonna work with this. I don't know if you need to do this, but I like to add a little bit of water, mix it up. Um, that way I feel like it flows better. And I totally just realized I forgot to uh, run this through a filter. So we're really gonna test the gun out today. This is brand new paint though, so I feel like we've got a, a halfway decent shot here. So I'm getting her mixed up with some water right now just to thin her out just a little bit. Again, I don't know if this is necessary, but I found um, in the past when I've sprayed doors and stuff with different types of guns, it usually ends up with a nice smoother finish. Again, we're using the 1.3 tip. We'll see if that works or if we need to bump up to the 1.8. Let's get this bad boy turned on. I think we've got it pretty dialed. Let's spray us some doors. I'm gonna let this dry, I have a feeling, um, or slash I'm hoping, once it dries it smoothens out a little bit and then I think two coats ought to be plenty for these doors. Now of course we're gonna fight the paint drying and the generator just ran out of gas, so we don't have the heaters going in here, which may or may not be a good thing. It's already pretty warm in here. Maybe it'll knock down on some of the humidity if we don't have the heaters going. All of you guys that live in colder climates, I do not envy you at all. I'm gonna make a vow right now, I will never live in a colder climate than I'm in right now. I don't know how you guys do it. Working is just miserable. I've let a couple hours pass now, and probably not gonna be able to see it on camera, but we have uh, our first coat has dried here, and it's actually evening out pretty good. So I think by the time we hit this second coat right now, um, it should be good. And I was honestly contemplating doing it in the morning because it's actually pretty late at night right now, but we got so much other stuff we gotta do tomorrow, so I don't want the doors to be in the way. These things are gonna have to move out of here tomorrow so we can primer this entire building. I wish I could be like, yeah, I totally just kicked butt and these doors look awesome, but I kind of screwed up. And unfortunately, um, I'm in a time crunch, so I'm working when I shouldn't be working. It's late, it's dark, all I have is that light to see, and once I move from one door to the next, I take the light with me, and it means that I can't see like what's happening um, to know if I need to adjust my settings or not. So, I ended up spraying a little too heavy on some of these doors, and I've just been chasing runs now, um, especially up in like these top little areas right here to where it almost cascades down the whole thing. So I've been wetting up a paintbrush with just water and I've been able to kind of ease a lot of the runs to where tomorrow I can come back with like a really like tight foam roller and probably be able to roll like a lot of the areas of the doors that I kind of screwed up on. You know, I think I need a little more practice um, getting those settings dialed in on the HVLP sprayer and it's just, it's too dark in here for me to see exactly what I'm doing and dial everything in. So, you know, Swing and a miss on those doors today, but you know, they look halfway decent. You know, I feel like most people would just put these in and be cool with it and walk away, but that's not me. I, I can't just walk away and be like, yeah, I did a great job, because I really did. Man, am I happy to see clear skies and sunshine today. Granted, it's not super warm, but I will take this over the rainy, wet, humid weather that we've been having. Just ran to Home Depot this morning and got couple small rollers to touch up the doors. They actually didn't turn out that bad now that um, I've seen them since they've dried. And just cause we're all keeping track here, this marks my second Home Depot trip since I've said how many more Home Depot trips to finish this project. We're on day four, I think, four of hoping the drywall texture has dried completely or the drywall mud and we're very, very close. I'll take you guys in the bathroom here which is where it was the wettest. And we've got just a tiny little spot right there. You're probably sick of updates on the wet drywall mud. Show you guys the doors. I know it's a little dark in here, but the doors actually, again, turned out pretty good. So I think a quick little touch up with a roller, uh, which brings me to a point I always like to bring up when I'm doing any type of painting is spraying stuff is nice because it gives it a really nice smooth finish unless you know, you're me and you haven't really dialed in the settings yet. But you can't really touch up 
a sprayed finish without respraying it. So keep in mind, if you have kids, a high traffic area, um, a rental property, whatever it may be, you want something you can easily touch up. So even though I sprayed these doors, if I had the appropriate roller here, I would have back rolled them just to get a little bit of texture in there because that means if there's ever a scuff on the door, all I gotta do is take that same type of roller and roll that paint back on and it'll blend in perfectly versus a super, super smooth sprayed finish. But right now, we're pushing forward. All these doors are gonna be moved to the garage section in the back. I'm gonna move all the crap out of here that I don't want covered in overspray even though I've already covered a lot of crap in overspray. And we are gonna get ready to spray and prime all of these walls, the ceiling, everything. It's gonna get pretty messy in here. I've never primed or sprayed a ceiling, so that's gonna be exciting. We do get to try out the new Avanti Airless sprayer there though. I'm excited about that. sprayer here and yes I have already opened it because I wanted to see um, what type of nozzles and stuff fit on this thing and it turns out uh, I'll show you guys the handle just first thing here um, this is the handle that comes with the Avanti cool thing about that is though all like Graco and major manufacturer nozzles and accessories work so I just happen to be at Home Depot they probably make an extension for the Avanti um, at Harbor Freight but I didn't have time to go there so I got a Graco heavy duty extension unfortunately because this thing's heavier than it needs to be, but it was all that they had in a four foot extension. And again, if I'm painting 10 foot ceilings, I feel like it's probably gonna be cool to have a four foot extension here. So, so I picked that up and everything crosses over. Everything works with the Harbor Freight line from all like the major manufacturers of paint sprayers. We've got the airless sprayer herself. I'm very excited to finally own an airless sprayer. I've been wanting to own one for a while, but you know, the Graco's are like six, 700 bucks. And I just don't paint enough for, to justify that. So this booger is actually super affordable. I think it's less than a couple hundred bucks. We're gonna see how good she works today. What do you think guys? Should we leave the plastic on this bad boy? I think we definitely are. So, so this is a 50 foot hose, which is awesome. And I'm thinking if I center myself up here, we might be able just to get most of this building without ever having to move the actual pump itself. Let's get the gun all set up here. Got an inline filter that goes in there. Look at that, they even throw in a, what is that, a T20? A little screwdriver? Okay, well we are fully assembled here. We've got our paint bucket, our uh, suction tube in the paint bucket. We've got our little, uh, I forget what they call it, but this is basically the priming side here. So it's gonna prime through there and it's gonna spit out um, paint through here, which is just gonna be like a little bit of waste paint to get the whole system primed. I believe that's how this works, but cool little feature here. It's actually got a lighted plug, so you know, you know, if you're plugged in, that the outlet you're in is good. That way if there's ever any issues, you know, you can know it's either the outlet or you know if it's the pump or anything like that. So that's a cool little feature to have there, but let's turn this bad boy on and see what happens here. If she'll prime, she's currently on spray. Let's kick her down to prime there and turn it on and see what happens. I'm assuming at some point we're gonna see paint come out of here. There we go. All right, we got paint coming through. So we are primed. I'm assuming we kick this back to spray now. We should be building up pressure in the hose. There we go. All right, now I'm assuming we are fully primed. We are ready to go. The old Tyvek coveralls. They didn't exactly have my size in stock, so I'm feeling it's a little big. Oh, we are ready to make some drugs. Just kidding, kids. Don't do drugs. It's bad, okay? Wish me luck. And my GoPro's. <laughs> it's probably going to get destroyed.
favorite pastime of washing paint dry. Um, I gotta say guys, the airless number one works great. I've used, you know, a Graco a couple of times in my life and this thing, I cannot tell the difference. Now I'm not a professional, so maybe y'all could tell the difference, but to me that thing's super rad, especially for the price. Now I did realize though, spraying ceilings is no fun at all. Like at all, at all. I mean, I'm covered in paint. My eyes are full of paint. I feel like the respirator wasn't doing what it was doing and I was just getting showered with paint. Um, and I left way too much crap out. So like you couldn't just like walk the entire ceiling. Then walk all the way back. And then walk all the way back. So I'm sure there's gonna be streaks and stuff up there. Granted, it's still drying right now and this is only primer. And it's only one coat of primer. Whereas like all these walls and stuff have gotten two coats. So you can still see there's spots that are still drying. But um, everything else got two coats. I, I don't know what I'm gonna do about this ceiling. I'm gonna get the walls all dialed into where I can just push everything up against the wall and then maybe try to spray these again. And again, um, we have to probably one more coat of primer and then at least two coats of ceiling paint still. So we're, we're far from done with my least favorite part. I did unfortunately though run out of primer. So yeah, I think that's gonna be it for tonight. <laughs> See you guys in the morning. Well, last night, um, once I put the camera down, I went ahead and just back rolled the entire ceiling. And I gotta say, Turned out a lot better than uh, I was kind of hoping for. There's a couple little streaks in it, but I think we're primed well enough to put on a good uh, couple coats of ceiling paint there. We've got Gunner this morning coming to check out the work. What's up, buddy? I also, uh, being that I didn't really have anything else I could do because I was out of material, I went ahead and retouched up the doors um, with just a nice soft foam roller and they actually turned out really right. So I think the doors look great and we're ready to, to push ahead. So. Today's goal is get the ceilings completely painted. Hopefully we start getting some paint on the walls. I don't know if I've announced the paint color yet, but you guys will see it in this video. But for the ceiling, just considering like my respirator, it wasn't working right, that's why I shaved. I didn't have safety glasses. I was a mess of paint yesterday. Um, the ceiling's not that big. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get an 18 inch roller and I'm just gonna roll these ceilings out. And then I don't have to worry about moving all the stuff here so I can walk and spray. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so Home Depot trip number three so far. Got us an 18 inch roller, a nice roller tray, and I think we're pretty much ready here. I hope I got enough ceiling paint at this point. I bought four gallons the other day. I've got all of our paint sample choices up here on the wall. Let me know if you guys agree. And obviously things look different on camera, but the one that we picked is that booger right there. It's light enough. Um, it's not a weird color gray. It's not too brown. It's not too purplish, not too blue. I hope, because we already bought a ton of it. So far it looks great in here, but I didn't want to go too dark in here because obviously, you know, granted the windows are covered right now and there's no lights on in here, but it's not the brightest building. So I think that one's gonna look cool. Not that we really have a choice because I've already committed and I've already bought it. I mean, we could change our mind, but I'm not wasting $300 in paint. I've never painted with a, uh, an 18 inch roller, so this should be interesting. All right, so an 18 inch roller feels kind of weird, but Let's go for it. We want to work quick. We don't want any edges to dry on us. because That's where you start to see different lines in the ceiling. So let's suit up and get to it. ceilings off of my list of things that I'm good. Like I don't, I don't think I need to do this ever again in my life, either spraying or rolling. They're just not fun. And shout out to you guys that do this every day for a living. You know, I painted my share of exteriors, I painted my share of interiors of houses. Um, I really, I've never painted a ceiling. And now I see why. It's just miserable no matter how you go about it. So you guys that do this for a living, you guys are awesome. And uh, yeah, definitely gonna call you guys next time. Good news is, um, all the ceilings are drying up right now, but everything is pretty much done. Bathroom's done in there. Now, if you guys have been watching the channel for a while, you've seen the way that I like to paint walls. Um, and that involves taping the ceiling, caulking the tape, and you get the absolute straightest lines ever. And I don't care what painter out there says they can get in there with just a brush and cut in by hand 
There's just absolutely no way I will put any amount of money on it. You can't get a straighter line than taping and caulking. The only problem is I can't tape this ceiling until the ceiling paint is dry, which if there's a trend here, if things not drying, who knows how long that's gonna take. So I don't wanna have to cut in by hand, but there's a chance we might have to cut this whole place in by hand and uh, it, to me, it's just subpar results. And granted, I'm not the best at it, but I've also watched really, really high-end painters and taping and caulking is still straighter. Now, I would never recommend what I'm about to do, but I am up against a very, very tight time crunch. I mean, we're already past schedule. Everything's just kind of crazy in the world right now. Um, one of our biggest holdups is gonna be cabinets, which are at least a couple weeks out, which is like, that's there's nothing we can do about that, and you can't do your flooring until you put your cabinets in. I mean, you can, but it's kind of a trashy way to do it. Um, if you ever need to change your floors, they're under the cabinets, things get weird. And to really solidify the type of time crunch I'm in, welcome to, uh, Welcome to the current bedroom out here until we can get this place done for our friend that's moving in. So I feel horrible about that, but I'm just, th there's only so much I can do um, in terms of materials and supplies and subs and all that stuff. So I'm gonna start painting these walls gray. Now, I really wanna caulk and tape that ceiling line right there. I'm gonna just roll all the walls as close to the ceiling as I can, even though we do have that soffit. So I'm gonna go right up to that soffit. The soffit is gonna end up getting painted, but I'm gonna go right up to that soffit and then I'm gonna come back later tape caulk and try and cut in. Now I do run the risk of it not blending right and you always seeing where I cut in later because dry times were different. Um, you know, maybe the next batch of paint wasn't exactly the same color. I'm gonna try and keep it the same batch of paint, but it's very risky what I'm doing, but I just gotta keep moving forward and I can't do anything with those ceilings still wet. Wish me luck guys, but let's get some color on these walls. Here goes nothing. Now I think what my plan is, is I'm gonna single coat everything. Then tomorrow, when I can actually cut in, I'll cut in, and then that way the final coat will blend in, even though we did it two days apart, hopefully. actually show a whole lot of anything so this morning you guys can kind of get a good taste here of the color albeit it's only got one coat um, so you're gonna see there might be a little bald spot here or there but I was worried this color might be a little too dark because once I was rolling it last night it was pretty dark in here and you'll probably get a good contrast right there between the white ceiling and the gray walls I think it's actually like the perfect amount of gray just enough to add you know something other than white on the walls but not too too crazy with the colors now I'm gonna do my best today to knock out hopefully all the painting, if not like the majority of the painting. I'll show you guys my tape and caulking trick if you guys haven't seen that yet. Now we are struggling a little bit today because my hat clip mount that I use for the GoPro, which would make, uh, you know, showing you guys a little tape caulking trick here, really, really easy, because I could just clip you onto my forehead right there, or five head or six head or however many heads I got, because that thing's giant. Um, it's gonna be a little more difficult today. So, I'm gonna kind of see this in stages. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape around the ceiling right now. Now, I know most professional painters are gonna say I'm crazy for doing this and they'll never waste the time to tape off the ceiling. And I get it, time is money. But if you have one guy running ahead of everybody, taping off the whole house, coming through, caulking everything, while everybody else getting everything else prepped, you can totally rock through your house pretty quickly. Now, I'm currently doing this by myself and in about 15 or so minutes, I'll have this whole ceiling taped off. Granted, it's a small house. But it can be done quickly and efficiently. Now, will my OCD and like perfectionism cause me from ever making money being a painter? Yes, it will. 
Now that everything is taped, we're gonna jump to the next step, and that is caulking all the tape. And let me give you a little explanation as to why we do this. So if you look right here, I've taped on this wall, and obviously this wall is pretty heavily textured. If your drywall is really smooth finish, um, or you have like really smooth plaster, this isn't as crucial. But out here in Southern California, textured walls are super popular. I know Arizona does too. Um, some states, this texture is even 10 times crazier than it is right here. So the problem with texture is you're always gonna have these tiny little gaps underneath the tape. And I mean, you could sit there and mush that down as much as you want. There's always somewhere gonna be tiny little spots where there's a gap between the tape and the wall because of how textured the wall is that the paint can get behind the tape. And as much as they sell, you know, sharp line tape and frog tape, you know, in my personal experience on heavily textured walls, they just don't work that great. Um, and they're not foolproof. And the problem is you don't know till you pull your tape. So if you're looking for something foolproof, this technique is essentially foolproof, or foolproof, whatever it is. So our ceilings are taped. Now we're gonna take just some caulking, which is, you know, multi-purpose Alex Plus here, which is fully paintable. And we're gonna come up into our ceiling, and we're gonna run just a small little bead of caulk. You don't wanna go super heavy with it, because we're actually gonna be wiping the majority of it off. Now, this does get a little bit messy on your finger here, but um, keep a wet rag around, wipe your finger off on the wet rag, and then go back and wipe again. And you're essentially gonna do this for the entire ceiling. Now obviously if I have two hands, I can go a lot quicker and one holds the rag and one wipes. But what you wanna do is you wanna remove as much caulking as you can. You can see that I've already wiped this twice and I'll show you, we'll come back through here again. There's still plenty of caulking there and I accidentally just put a big old glob on the wall. Let's get that off. Literally all we're trying to do with the caulking is fill in that gap behind the tape. We don't want a bunch of caulking on the wall. We don't want a bunch of caulking on the tape. We definitely don't want a bunch of caulking in the gap between the two because that caulking is gonna solidify. And if we have caulking that kind of bridges the gap between the wall and the tape and it dries and it's thick enough when you go to pull the tape, that caulking's coming off too, which is also gonna take the paint, which is gonna leave a nice big old chunk missing of paint when you do that. So you wanna get in there as much as you can and clean off as much caulking as you can and I'm trying really hard to say caulking with that L in there. That way you don't have any issues later down the line. So remember, we just want the caulking to get behind the tape or fill in that little gap behind the tape. And this works well on white because we're using white caulking. So the caulking is gonna get back there, but you're never gonna see it because it's white on white. Now I've spent all of about an hour getting the ceilings taped and caulked, the windows taped and caulked. And I know that may seem like a long time in terms of prep work, but trust me, Here's where the magic comes in. Now instead of having to be super careful and going around and cutting in on your ceilings and you know, working your paint a little further away and then getting up in there and trying to get that straight line and God forbid there's not a weird dip or wobble on the ceiling that you're gonna have to follow. You can literally come up here and just slop your paint on. I mean, slop being still do it neatly, but uh, you just push your paint right up against that tape, right up against that caulking, as long as you don't go too wild and get it on the ceiling right there. You can essentially race around, and again, I'm trying to do this one-handed here. Uh, you can essentially race around and you can do all your cut in super, super quick. And then when you come time to second coat, same thing, super, super quick. You'd honestly probably be just fine if you've got the painter's handle that has the brush holder on it. I've never personally used one, but I feel like this would set you up to use one of those and be extremely quick at cutting in, especially on 10 foot ceilings like we're dealing with here. The other cool thing about this, and I've actually had this happen to me once, is um, if a homeowner picks a paint color, you get their entire walls all nice and painted, they come home and they're like, oh my God, I don't really like that color, can we change it? If, as long as you don't pull that tape off, you don't have to worry. You race right back up there, you can race a whole brand new color around the house without having to worry about trying to cut back in on all the ceilings and making it an absolute castle. So I prefer this method. I know a lot of painters will say I'm crazy and they can cut it in better by hand. But again, I will put my money on this method as being a perfectly straight line as opposed to somebody's hand, which I know for a fact good painters can do well, but this is just cleaner. Like this is 100% guaranteed clean straight line. And let's say the guy before you painted and got a little bit of paint on the ceiling. Well, if you're cutting in by hand, you're gonna stay on the wall, unless you wanna paint the ceiling like the guy before you did. Uh, but with the tape method, what you can do is you can actually get that straight line to come onto the ceiling a little bit and go past where the old paint was, tape that, caulk it, repaint that whole line. Now granted, you're gonna be painting on the ceiling, but you're gonna have this long straight line that's gonna be on the ceiling and your eye is gonna think that's still a part of the wall and you'll eliminate whoever painted before you's bad paint job that's on the ceiling and you'll basically make like a faux wall line. I don't really have a spot here to demonstrate that, but it works beautifully.
done my second coat of cutting. Um, and it took me all of four minutes because everything's taped and caulked. And it's still a little bit wet, but the cool thing is you can pull the tape off now and be good to go. So let's get to the most satisfying part about all that prep work that we did. Just look at that. Just look at that line right there. Just look at that line right there. And I challenge everybody that says they can cut in better on textured ceilings to give a nice up close shot like that and show me you got a straighter, cleaner line than what we're seeing right there. Like, that's just perfect. Absolutely perfect. And that right there, guys, is the reason I use this technique always. It removes any error factor. Look how beautiful that line is. And I know I'm way too OCD when it comes to paint. Most people could care less if the line's that perfect or not, but for me, it's gotta be like that. And I know for sure most people dealing with rental properties definitely don't care that their paint lines look like that, but I think if I ever require more rental properties, I'll pay people to come in and paint because you kind of have to not care, unfortunately, when it comes to rental properties, but I care too much. Now I'm gonna go around, get all this peeled, get everything cleaned up in here. The paint is pretty much officially done, which means the next step is we gotta get all the electrical finished. We gotta get the kitchen finished, uh, the bathroom. Still a lot more to go, but we're getting very, very close. So with that, we're gonna wrap up. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not subscribed already, please click the subscribe button now that you do not miss out on any future content. Don't forget to give this video a like, get a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out workforapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life, you gotta be willing to work for it. Plus, we got a bunch of new designs, so go check them out. You guys are the best, I'm out. Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh.